You say it's a testament to America that you were able to become Secretary of State. Do you think America today can be led and can produce a leader of the quality you talk about in the book? It's the unsolved problem before us because we're so divided. And in the period that you and I are talking about, we were also divided about the Vietnam War. But it was a different kind of division. It was a debate about policy. But now so much about the de of the debate is about the worthiness of the American experience itself. And it is not something that can be settled by making a policy decision. But what we need is to come together on the conviction that the purposes are parallel. The differences may be on tactics, and for those, a democratic solution is always possible. I would argue that the problem could be even deeper than that. We can't even agree on what's a fact today. Yeah, it's true. It's, uh, it's a very painful period because the whole world is in turmoil and America on the side of the free peoples is the country whose leadership is essential. A president ought to be able to enter the Oval Office with the conviction that there is a core group of people of both parties, of both parties, that will support him. And that's no longer a given fact. I want to ask you about a, a, a recent controversy. When you were speaking to the Davos group, you talked about the situation in Ukraine and suggested that negotiations, this was two months ago, would have to begin about now, by early July, uh, that would eventually lead to something like a situation like that we had in 2014. President Zelensky said you were appeasing. Well, what did, were you misinterpreted? What did you make of his response? And it's not formally retracted his response. He seems to agree with the outcome that I mentioned. Uh, the my point was that it, the best place for a ceasefire is a return to the status quo ante, which is to where the war started. So then the Russians would have been thwarted in their attempt to take over Ukraine. What the Ukrainian president objected to was that he thought I was saying that it part of territory that the Russians had occupied 10 years earlier and which had been tolerated by the rest of the world should also be part of mm -hmm. a ceasefire settlement. And I warned that one should not turn the war for the freedom of Ukraine into a war about the structure of Russia, because that would be a much more complicated Do you issue. think that's happening now? Well, right now, uh, Russia still has 20% of the pre-war Ukrainian territory. And under my proposal, they would have to give up that 20% in order to achieve a ceasefire. I strongly favor that Russia not come out of the war with any visible gain or with any gain. But I also think that after the achievement, the question of the long-term relationship of Russia to the United States and Russia to Europe will become a challenge to long-range diplomacy. We are both nuclear countries, not just nuclear countries, we are high-tech countries. So a constant tension between us 
uh, will have consequences for humanity, and it will involve China in the long run. How do you explain Putin's miscalculation here? Do you believe it was a miscalculation? Oh, yes, it was a gross miscalculation. My view uh, of Putin is that he is a character out of Dostoevsky. He's not a Hitler type. Uh, but that doesn't make him easy to deal with. So a character of Dostoevsky who believes that this vast territory, which calls itself Russian, that has 11 time zones and has so many different people and above all so many different neighbors, and that has to, in its mind, protect itself against all these neighbors, is held together by some mystic quality peculiar to the to Russia and in his mind uh, Ukraine has always been part of this in all your time in the government of course you've seen all of the analyses of what would happen if nuclear war actually did break out how is it possible knowing what you know to actually move to the point, like in the Yom Kippur War, where you raise the level of readiness, where you know this could lead to a series of events that will be unthinkable. Well, in the Yom Kippur War, it was the Soviets who had actually threatened the action. And so that something had to be done was pretty much consensus. Nuclear weapons have existed now for nearly 80 years. Uh, each country has been building refined uh, aspects of these weapons, and their numbers have increased, and the numbers of countries that possess them have increased. And yet, no country has been willing to dare to use them because they are so unsure of the consequences. And this is a particular aspect also of the Ukrainian issue, because people say, what would we do if the Russians use nuclear weapons? I think that's the wrong question, because we'll surely invent one counter move. There is no dividing line that we have yet discovered, and strangely enough that we have even studied. In an earlier period, there were arms control discussions, but they have totally lapsed between nations. So nobody really knows what if that line is crossed what the next line will be, how you'd stop a nuclear war. Incredibly lucky that it hasn't happened. What decision, which experience in all your career are you most proud of? In my experience, well, the most serious one was during the Yom Kippur War. But Nixon and I, I must say, we had a tendency we were not in favor of escalation, but we felt that if we escalated, we should escalate to a point very close to what the other side would tolerate in order to prevent the sliding into a nuclear war through a series of little steps, the last one of which suddenly turns out to be nuclear. How about on the flip side? Any key decisions you would take back today? You know, that's a question I'm often asked. <laughs> <laughs> and I have developed no great answer for it because I've been thinking about these problems all my life. It's my hobby. It's 
well, it's my occupation. And so the recommendations I made were the best of which I was then capable. Dr. Kissinger, thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.